my colleague because Stacy couldn't get in. I don't know well, why. She's, she's mm -hmm. definitely here. She's on this call because there's six participants. <laughs> I'll do it. Cannot go for more than 90 seconds. Am I clear? What happens after 90 seconds? <laughs> Don't want to stay. Put your hand on it. <laughs> now say, talk to me. Hi, Danny. This is Lisa from Top Movie Fix Taiwan. And first of all, I would like to do this. Like, uh, uh, oh, no, I can't work for <laughs> Talk to me, Danny. Oh, I can't. <laughs> You know, this is such a bummer that we're doing this virtual interview. It I know, was... we could have done it in person. Yeah, I would like to see, I so love to see what would happen when I shake your hands. Because <laughs> you do have a magical touch of oral. <laughs> <laughs> what was your inspiration? I mean, I mean, you are a YouTuber. I mean, I, I am a YouTuber myself. But, well, I don't have as much as followers like you. You're like 7 million right now, right? Almost 7 million. So, well, that's Oh my awesome. gosh. You are very successful in the YouTube channels. What inspired you to moving forward to filmmaking? Yeah, I, I, like it was always our goal to begin with. Before we started YouTube, it was sort of like, that was the only thing that we wanted to do was to make movies and TV shows. And um, I, the YouTube stuff sort of took off really quickly and became our jobs. And we um, got caught up in the world of it because it's sort of instant gratification and you're able to mm. really, really train and uh, build your skill set as makers. So uh, right. every single one of our videos felt like it was helping build towards making a movie. That was always the main goal. Oh, so it was always your dream and you just like, you know, making your dream come true. for the first feature films. What inspired you to make that story? I mean, make the story of all the possessions and, you know, talking to the dead. Was there any, like, real life experience for you to make such topic? Oh my God, there's, uh, the entire writing process was expressing a whole bunch of things that were scaring me personally. And uh, so every part of Element is just things that I, I, are from my life or have bothered me, whether it's from mental health or like an extreme traumatic, uh, and or, or losing somebody in grief like um all that stuff is just embodied and and metaphorically put on the screen uh, um it, it was just about expressing everything that's scaring me at the time and yeah different parts like, inspiring different elements like something else inspired the hand compared to something that inspired the way that i think it was interacting with the kid there's so many different things because you're yourself a brave person a courageous person or you're actually scared mm -hmm. of you know the ghost and spirit things spiritual oh. <laughs> I, I'm really um, excited by the idea of the afterlife and, and, and ghosts and whenever Michael and I travel we always try to find the most haunted location of the state or country that we're in and, we, and we'll sleep there overnight. So we, we've slept in like a whole bunch of different haunted places and talked to so many psychics around the world. We're obsessed with it. It's so interested. Wow. So, so you actually go to those haunted spots? Yeah, yeah. We, we, we've stayed, and we've stayed in... We've, we've, we've stayed in seven of the ten most haunted places in the world uh, that, that are wow. Yeah, so yeah, you, from the country. You to the quite <laughs> courageous. I mean, anything happened at all? Any supernatural or things you can explain? <laughs> I, I literally know, which is a, a bit of a sad thing. Like, I, I, I want, I'm interested in something happening. I'm so curious about something happening, but I haven't had, I haven't experienced anything at those places. But my one story of like something I couldn't explain was um, our grandfather really helped raise us and um, he would take us to school, drop us back home. He lived with us. And so it was always comforting hearing him come home at night. So he would go out and would come home at midnight. And I always felt, remember feeling really safe hearing him come home. He'd come home, we'd hear him doing the dishes. And um, when we were 13, he passed away in our house. And um, 
It was a couple of days after he died that I was sleeping. It was midnight and I woke up and someone in the house of all the lights off, I could hear someone doing the dishes. So yeah. I heard that. And then in the morning when I spoke to my sister, she'd heard it as well. So that scared the crap out of me. That that was like um, a little bit comfortable, but really terrifying. So I could never explain that. But who knows? Maybe my dad was doing the dishes with the lights mm -hmm. off. I don't know. <laughs> it is so warm to know that your grandpa actually visits you, right? And <laughs> that, that's one side of it. The other one is he's dead. So what the hell is happening? So yeah, it was both comforting and, and terrifying. <laughs> I would love to Taiwan. We can go to the haunted place together. I know. Oh my gosh. Where they love to visit haunted place. Now, be careful. If you say that, I will follow up on it. So if you're being serious, I eventually will come to Taiwan and I will hit you up. <laughs> My colleague, because Stacey couldn't get in. I don't know well, why. She's, she's mm -hmm. definitely here. She's on this call because there's six participants. I've got Athena, Danny, Lisa, Stacey and me. So there's no, they're not on camera, but I can see that they're in on the call.